Go. Go. Oh, hey you guys. Sorry it's been a while again. It's just busy. I like busy. I'm not one to just sit around and uh, I'm in a, again, a different school, full-time school. It's not a vocational this time. And I did like the vocational school because you get a lot of days off, a lot of time off and stuff. But you know what? Even at my age, I love it. I love this industry. I love to teach. I love what I'm doing. And uh, when, when, when you love what you do, it's not work. It's, you just enjoy it. And there's nothing more than watching a student when they understand. And everyone teaches slightly different. So sometimes taking what students already know and reinforcing what they know and taking it back. Because it, as, as you know, no one learns the same. And, and where my heart goes out to the students is, I was one of those people. I was one of those people that I had to write it down. I was one of those people that I had to say, okay, what, what did you just do? And, and uh, you know, why did you do it? I was fortunate enough, you know, when I went to school many years ago, that they would teach us everything. Every single client was evaluated, face shape, hair color, whether they were just getting a haircut, didn't matter. And uh, anymore now, the schools are in it, you know, okay, consultation, what do they want? Okay, do it. Well, I really wish I would see more schools taking the time to say, okay, what should, you know, what face shape are we working with? This is the best, you know, suggesting to the client. And if the client doesn't want it, that's fine. But um, knowing where you're at, and you, you've heard me say this phrase before, is knowing where you're going. This video, I will be doing a zero in the end of it. So you've seen the zero haircut, but I want to go into a lot of detail. If you want to learn haircutting, what happens with haircutting, please watch. Pause it, take notes, because some of you have said, send me some of your diagrams. Well, there's no reason for me to send you my diagrams. You need to learn how to do it. If you learn how to do it, believe me, you can master haircutting. The, the hardest cuts to do are not the longer cuts. Remember the book. Where is it? It's here somewhere. <laughs> you want to get one off from the house. Okay, sorry. My husband wants me to make sure, because I keep I get so involved with teaching you guys that I, I keep forgetting to promote my book. And I said, remind me to promote the book, all right? I'd love it if you guys... You know, it's on Amazon. I mean, it's rated five star. Trust your PhD stylist. Okay, look it up. Look it up. Trust your PhD stylist. You'll see that it's rated five star. Several, several organizations have it. My my dream is is when I I mean even Walmart. Okay, and, and I shop at Walmart. So my dream is to be able to walk through Walmart and to be able to see my book on the shelf. Uh, my dream is be it's at Barnes and Noble promotes it. Be able to walk through Barnes and Noble and see my book on, on the shelf. So trust your PhD stylist. It's about our business. It's about what we go through. It's about what we do. But the last chapter, yeah, who wants to know? Tells you everything about color. We make it too difficult, and once you read that, you realize is that all it is? Yeah, it is. But it's knowing it in your head, not product. Companies want you to learn product. Okay, let's get to this. Okay, let's get to this. All right, so um, before you can start, I mean, before you even think about cutting, know where you're at, for goodness sake. Got to wait for my cameraman to come back because I'm going to have to start at the middle here as opposed to, I don't know if you can see the side or not. But um, if you don't know where you're at on the head form, what direction do you think you need to take? And, and I'm going to be honest with you. And I'm not being negative, please. I'm just being honest. When I see videos and they cut that perfect straight line and then they go to the other one and they cut that perfect straight line, you're learning. Don't. I see students spending forever trying to get that perfect straight line in the cut. Learn the procedure first, perfect it afterwards. Once you learn the procedure, you can perfect it. Because what? You know what to do next. But as you're learning it, you get lost in the wilderness about it. So, uh, you know, as you move forward with this, learn what to do next when you're doing it. So, anyways, um, 
diagram the head form. The parietal line, if you take a cone, put it right here, bring it right out, make sure it's perfectly horizontal. It used to be called a horseshoe. That's the parietal line. Now, there's people that will call that the crest. It is the crest, but what's within that crest? Because when you do a fade, they're going to tell you, take it up to the crest. Well, if you don't know exactly where the crest is at, the crest, if you put it at the occipital, straight vertical in the back, and I'm going to show you with the mannequin in a little bit, uh, straight vertical up and down in the back, where that comb leaves the head, up on top, just below the parietal line, you follow that around. That's the lower line of the crest, and that's also the lower ridge. That is where, when you're doing a clipper cut, and you want to fade it up, that's how far you go. I love it when I can tell students, hey, take it up to the lower ridge. And I can yell at them across the room instead of saying, just take it up to the, you know, where it curves around. No. Definite, definite statements. Definite. This is a, this is a map. This is a map of the head form. And again, you know, we get lost if we don't know where we're at. So the parietal line is, is kind of the first thing we talk about all the time, and I hope you can see it here and here. This is the side, this is the front, this is, I mean, this is the back, this is the front. Well, within that parietal line, of course, is the upper ridge and the lower ridge. That's the crest. But one thing they don't tell you is within that crest, just slightly above the center area, the center occipital, just slightly, not so much into the what this is, the highest part of the head form is the apex. If you really look at it, it kind of looks like a goose egg. It's an oblong, all right? So it looks like a goose egg. Uh, when you do this, the, the, what, what happens here, this is the vertex. The vertex is where your cowlicks are. Have you ever seen somebody get a haircut and the cowlicks are sticking up? Well, that's the vertex especially if it's short. Or have you seen, you've seen my hair because I've got videos where it splits right there at the vertex. And then I've got this big old split in the back because that's where my colleagues are, directing the hair one way, directing it another. Did you not find it? Okay, if you go up by the TV to the right side on the shelf, there's my books. You want to get one. Okay, how many of you have husbands? <laughs> Sorry guys, sorry guys, I know there's guys watching this, but they've, they've been there for years, okay? Okay, anyways, <laughs> sorry. So, if you know this, then you, you, you know where the cowlicks are on anybody. Now, some people do have cowlicks up in the frontal fringe. That's this one here, where the hair grows one way. It's, it's not as common. Now, we do have what's called a growth pattern. So diagramming a haircut, you've got to look at all these things in a client. They're not on a mannequin. Trust me on that. So we have the vertex. So as you go up, if you know exactly where that upper ridge is at, where the frontal fringe is at, and if you know, let's come straight down the, the occipital. At the occipital area, okay, here, he's got my book. Let me show it to you. Those of you that haven't seen it, you see that my, my videos... <laughs> Here it is. Um, trust your PhD stylist, all right? Please order the book. I think you guys will really get a lot out of it. It really talks about our industry. Hairdressers, you understand. Clients that are trying to learn how to cut hair, people at home, whatever, uh, you understand what we go through. It, it, it is real. It is true. And uh, it's, it's a life. But this is what stylists are thinking in the back room when they're trying to come up with your color or your haircut. It does have a lot of color stories and stuff on it, but the last chapter is about color. And it's about how do you define what's in the client, what's in the product, how do you combine them. And by the way, the word cancel and the word neutralize, take that out of your vocabulary. You're not canceling anything. We're not canceling a debt here. We're not neutralizing and make something disappear. We're creating when you're combining color. Okay? So anyways, do, um, seriously, look at, at, at uh, ordering the book. And like I said, Barnes & Noble, Walmart, at Amazon, there's a BCB, BCB or something in England and Europe that has it. So 
Um, I hope you get it. Anyways, okay, so let's go back. So cameraman, can we see this all right since you left for a minute? Is this visually good? Okay, so along the side, the parietal line, how do we do this? How do we make this diagram? Some of you already know. Some of you that have been watching this, you already know, all right? So how many of you know how to make a question mark? I wanted to make a tiny one here. Let's make a question mark, all right? Do you have a question? Make a question mark. How many of you know what a number one looks like? Just a simple number one. You're going to put a number one. Number one, right there. How about a number two? Just underneath it, number two. Then there's the ear. There's your head form. Simple as that. It's not any more difficult than that. Practice it. Question mark, one and two. From that beginning of the number one is where the parietal line starts. Now let's talk about the flat part of the head. That is the temporal area. And put your hand on it. For goodness sake, your palm is flat on the head. It's going to be, it's flat. This is where you have the least amount of hair. The occipital is where you have the most, all right? So parietal line, P-E-R-I-T-I-A-L, line, all right? Parietal line, travels around the head just like a horseshoe. They used to call it the horseshoe part. All right, just above that, now if you take your comb, and you can see if I place my comb, I mean it's pretty darn close to that parietal line, but if I place my comb at that area where the comb leaves the head, that's the parietal line. I'm sorry, sorry, incorrect. That's the lower ridge, that's the lower ridge. The parietal line, if you want to know exactly where it's at, I just told you a minute ago, your forehead, straight back. Where the comb leaves the head is underneath that. That is the lower ridge, okay? And do correct me when I make mistakes. Make a note underneath, say, hey, you said this, and is that what you meant? Because I will answer you. Um, all right, so sorry for that mistake. Uh, anyway, so where the comb leaves the head is the lower ridge. So you can actually see that right there, all right? So uh, whenever the head is the head, some people have a more rounded occipital area, some people have it flat, but everybody, whether it's flat or rounded, inverts in. Where it inverts in is the nape line. If you take your elbow out, place your finger, your index finger, don't guide it, just slide it back and it'll take you right back to your knowledge bone. That is the nape line line. That is where you start learning to taper when you're doing taper haircuts. That's where you start your A line, especially if it's really short on women or right at the what we call perimeter line or hair line. Perimeter is the outside of something. You know, you can go as far to this perimeter, you can't go beyond it. That's why we call it the perimeter line, not interior, exterior, none of that. It's the perimeter line, all right? So, uh, so your nape line within that, when you, you see these little sections here. So those little sections, okay, so let's do this, parietal. Parietal line. Lower ridge, does this help? upper ridge and write it the way you want to learn it and then apex okay this is flat okay but what is it it's a temporal and it's flat now the thing about it being flat you can put your hand on the side now watch my hand as it folds over, it folds into the occipital. This is the temporal area. Surprisingly enough, when you look at a medical form, this whole area is the parietal. I thought that was kind of strange when I saw that. Was it the, just looking at a medical form and I thought, wow, that's weird. Because, but anyways, it's flat. All right, so the thing about, oh, and at the ear, this little nodule on your ear, that's called the Tragus, T-R-A-G-U-S. It is a point of measure. 
The thing that people don't realize is that ears are a point of measure for a lot of stuff. We try and measure it ourselves without thinking. That's that center focal point of measure, but there's Look at somebody's ears and look at all those lines that you've got. You can take it to the tip of the ear. You can take it to that curve of the ear inside. You can take it to that first fold. Take it to the tragus. Take it to the earlobe. But what's one thing for guys that you can measure with that? Their sideburns. All right? Works out great. So, all right, so this is the flat part of the head, um, temporal area, and then, of course, we know the occipital, O-C-C-I-P-I-T-A-L the occipital area, that's where you've got the most amount of hair. I mean, look at that. This is where you've got the least amount. The good thing is, is this hair helps it. This is your frontal fringe. Fringe, F-R-I-N-G-E, and it's also the bang area. And you can see this one in the front. It's got, it's right there. It connects to the apex. Why is it triangle shaped? Okay, how many of you cut bangs and then you take a rectangular shaping when you cut the bang, take it rectangular straight across, when you cut the bang, you bring it down, you cut it across, and then you wonder as you're letting the hair get longer that these little hairs are flying out. There's your why right there. You want to know the whys, right? All right, so if this hair inverts in, you're still going to have a pretty good sized bang, but this hair on the other side of it stays longer and... Uh, works out better. The only time you would do it, uh, do a, a rectangular part, is when you do maybe about an eighth of an inch just for a hint of a bang. That's it. Just for a real light stroking of a bang, not anything heavy. Um, so normally what I do on the bang trims and later on as we do other cuts, I'll show it to you, but I usually just part off at the frontal fringe, bring it, and I cut it vertically. I don't need Dora bangs. What happens, and there's things that I'll be sharing with you, when hair travels, this hair travels, so it's gonna cup around the face, all right? So that creates a nice cupping around the face. All right, so at, let's go back to the nape. This is the nape. And again, if you know where the nape is at, you know how to, you, it helps when you start doing a, a uh, tapered haircut because this is where it's going to show the most. You are going to learn something about the sides when I show you a tapered haircut. And I'll give you a clue right now. Parietal line, tip of the ear. Keep that in mind. Just make a note of that for a tapered haircut. Parietal line, tip of the ear, because I'll be talking a lot about that. But at the nape line right here, you've got two sections that are sectioned off. All these little dots are the hair, by the way. These little strokes right here, that's the perimeter line, that's the hair line. That's what that means. So if you're wondering, what does that mean right there? Um, so these two areas here at the back of the nape, it takes to see shorter hair to see it, but you also have cowlicks there. Another factor, now some of these cowlicks, some may grow up on one side, down on the other. They may grow up on both sides. They may grow down on both sides. They may just grow in, they may grow out. They've got a, quite a direction and you'll be able to tell when you get the hair really short. But start looking at men's haircuts and you can see that. Now, the thing about the, the uh, nape line as well is that's where the hair is going to then again be the thickest many times or darkest. The reason for that is because of the hair that comes over. It's protected, all right? So that's where that hair is going to be, have a little bit more resistance when you're doing a color and so on. So once you know where this area is, the vertex and the apex, and actually I could bring this just a little closer, but if you start at the center frontal fringe, right here, center frontal fringe, go past the apex, go past the vertex, create two vertical lines, come straight down, you can do an instant, quickly, mohawk, all right? So these are the different parts of the head form know them. You know this is the perimeter line. M-E-T-E-R. This, these little dots, okay, I'll make little dots right here. Interior. Inside. Inside the perimeter line. So I hope, oh, the vertex right here. 
So like I said, pause it, write it down. Write it down so you have it. Frontal fringe, upper ridge, lower ridge, parietal line, apex, um, flat part of the head, perimeter line, uh, interior tragus, nape, uh, behind the ear, occipital area, and uh, vertex. So several different areas, but now when we start cutting, you know where you're at and you know where you're going. One statement that I will make many times, if somebody's got really thick hair, it's wise that you subsection tip of the ear to tip of the ear horizontally, in other words, horizontally, to uh, get rid of some of that hair. And you would just pull that up after you've pre-sectioned this already. So I'm going to bring my mannequin out to show you what I'm talking about. So you see the nape line here. This is the occipital. This is the flat part of the head. This is the parietal line. At the very top, right here, just above, you can see, I'll do it with a comb, where the comb leaves the head, right there. That's the line for the apex. The frontal fringe is then taken, if you take it from where the comb leaves the head, takes it to the very front of the apex, pie shape it out to the, the parietal line, you're going to direct it forward and cut it straight up and down. So when we get ready to cut, and I'm just going to do the bottom here at this point because I do want to come back, I want to use this language for you. I want to talk about it. I want you to feel comfortable with it. But you're not going to feel comfortable with it until you truly learn how to diagram. And the thing about what I'm doing right now, it's called a zero elevation. Zero means zero. means we're not lifting it up. All of this hair is going to be coming down to that. Here's the thing, all right? When hair travels, it gets longer. If you take all of this hair and cut it straight across, where will it be longer? You tell me. If you take this hair straight across and cut it straight across, where is it going to be longer? Is it going to be at the center nape? Or is it going to be at this area behind the ear closest to the flat part of the head. When hair travels, it gets longer. If we take it and direct it to the center, and this hair is directed, I'm going to take that same line, I'm going to take it straight across so you can see, is directed to the center. Which one is longer? Look at it. All right? So understand that the head is what? Round. So you have to travel around it. Most of your cuts are only going to be two knuckles. That's it. And then you're going to move over. Now, there's a lot of things that I see on videos that drive me crazy, and I just happen to have something right now. I see people section the hair with one of these. <laughs> Take this comb. It's called a weaving comb. It's meant for foil weaving, highlights. Just take it, kind of tap the top of your head. And then just kind of run it through, slide it through your head like you're going to section it. If it doesn't hurt, you're pretty hard-headed. But if you've got people with thin skin, you, you be ready for a lawsuit, all right? You're going to slice right into it. This is sharp. Especially, and I, it, it drives me crazy when I see it in videos, but I see it. So I, I'm just expressing myself, all right? Does it mean that it's wrong on a mannequin? Do what you want. On a person, do not. Please. I, that's, I just rather use a, it's called rat tail comb. It's those black combs with the long tail like this. So I'm, I'm sure you know what they look like. So anyways, let's just move forward. I just wanted to share that with you. You know, we share a lot of things in the salon talk about everything. I mean, it's amazing what you talk about. I talk about this, you know, in the school with the students. I want to share something with you, though. Personal advice. How many of you buy spinach? And you hate it because it gets all wet and uh, you can't use it soon enough and it's all wet and ugly and you can't use it? Okay. Paper towels. If you buy it by the bag, put a 
paper towel on one side, put a paper towel on the other, roll it up. It stays fresh much longer. Secrets to the universe. Okay, so let's move forward. I want to share that. How much time do I have, cameraman? Five minutes. Okay, we have five minutes. So the first thing I want you to do... No, just do it. Start and stop. Yeah, that's okay. I'll be done. This is a lot of lecture for some people, and I want to make sure that you guys are getting this. I will come back and do the zero and talk about every one of these parts of the head as I do it. So if you know how to diagram it, how to put it together for yourself, my diagrams are not necessarily going to teach you, because I can read my own. Do you want to be able to read your own? That's the whole idea behind this. Okay, so at the center nape, Oh, before we do this, you hold your shear at the tip of the fingers. You don't hold it back, all right? You can't cut it. And it's doing a lot of damage to your hands when you do this. When you hold it at the balls of the fingers, and your two fingers go on this part, it's called the shank. This is called a, I forget what it's called right now. I'm, I'm drawing a blank, okay? I think it's called a tip. Okay, but anyways. Um, you have the cutting blade, which is on your thumb. You have your steel blade, which is on the fingers. All right? So some people are real good about doing this, just moving their thumb. I'm not. And if you are, I admire you. Uh, the only thing is, look at what you're cutting before you cut. Because there's a variety of angles in cutting, and we're going to cover that. Right now, it's just going to be straight. I could call this palm down. A lot of people do, that's a common language. I could call this palm out. I could call this palm facing me or whatever. The terms that we're gonna be using when we cut is primary, secondary, extended. And yes, you will use each one. So in the future, you're not gonna hear me say palm down. You're gonna hear me say primary, secondary, and extended. It's got a name. You can have it primary and cut it a 45 degree angle. Either way, cut straight across. Secondary, 45 degree angle. The other way, cut straight across. Extended, 45 degree angle. Do you see what I'm saying? There is no question, where's my palm? You know where it's at. Primary, secondary, extended. So I'm going to use the secondary position, but before you start cutting, if you haven't been cutting, please put yourself in front of the mirror. Hold your shear like this, put your other hand behind you, and then bring your shear down, and bring your shear up. Do that 10 times. Then do it with your eyes closed 10 times. Okay, primary. I should have done primary first, but that's all right. Anyways, primary, same thing. Now this is what I wanna show you. Okay, just 10 times. Make sure your shear is straight, look at it. All right, extend it. Up, down. 10 times, close your eyes, look at it. You wanna learn how to cut? This is how you learn. All right, we have one minute, so I'm gonna show you one thing. When they have really long hair, especially when they're sitting down and you're bending down, can you see that cameraman? See what happens with the shear. All right, you see it? That's what's going to happen. Bring your elbow in. Now you see how it became straight. There's your clues. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to start at the center occipital. I'm only going to cut two knuckles. I want to make sure that this is straight and this is straight before I cut. I'm going to cut in the secondary position. This is straight, this is straight. Now, I've seen people cut in the primary position, but what this does is it forces the hair, and I'll show you real quick. I'm gonna go down a bit. Is it wrong? No, not if that's what you want. See that hair flip out a bit? Okay, he's telling me to hurry up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off for just a sec, and uh, it's just gonna take a few minutes, you guys. So let him cut off, and I'll give you a couple minutes. Okay, there, so he started it over. Anyways, so the thing to do is if you want that hair to be perfectly straight, you want, this, and look at my cut, isn't that lovely? Okay, secondary position, make sure your shear is straight, cut it across, and it laid, well, it's supposed to lay down better, but I've already curved it out. 
Now, you're going to travel around it. I'm not going to bring this hair over to cut it straight because this hair then will be longer than the center. And then what you're going to do is you're going to look at it and you say, what happened here? All right, you can't do that. What happens is one side you bring it over to cut and then the other side we tend to lean our fingers over a bit. It's a common movement. So what's going to happen? One side is going to be longer as well than this longer side. So what you're going to do, if you want a true zero, you want to travel across the head. But be careful if you do bring it straight back. Look at your fingers before you cut, before you close the shear. So I'm going to still do it the secondary position. Let me wet this. should be cut wet. And like I said, we will finish this cut. And I'll try and do another video tomorrow, get it done for you guys, because I'm going to leave all this alone for us to do it. And then we'll do the zero elevation completely and using all of these terms. Now, straight, straight, secondary. I want to make sure that I can see my guide. My guide is that last haircut. I'm not using my fingers as a guide. My shear is the thing that's cutting because some of us have got, you know, fingers that are a little bit different. Now, do you see now I'm off to the side? I was here, here, and now here. And I kind of curled it a little bit. I shouldn't have. Okay, so I'm going to travel around for you to see the other side. So as you travel around, or turn your client on the chair to the to the that other side. So again. Traveling around, bring the hair. I know you can't see it because of my arm and all that stuff. And now I've traveled around the head form. Is it even? I don't know. Can't tell when I'm doing a video. Yep, it is. Now, here's one way you can check yourself. We pull it down, don't we? Why not pull it out? It's even. Pull it out. It's either going to be straight down or it's going to be straight out. The length is the same. So uh, I wanted to show you that. I hope you've gotten some of this on diagramming a haircut. Because everything that we talk about is going to have to do with these different forms. It is not just one, it, two, and three, which a lot of companies have that. It is not four quadrants. It is every section that we're at to get it. And to get it perfectly straight, look at that hair as it's drying. Look at the waves. So you've got to have equal porosity, equal moisture. Or else, yeah, you're going to end up with a little bit of cut that's off. All right? I hope that's straight. What do you guys think? That's yeah, not bad, is it? All right. Thank you so much, you guys. Sorry it's been a while. I want to go into deep detail on this. I want to talk to you more about it. If there's anything in particular, somebody wanted the Sassoon cut with the points. Okay, that's more of a style into that cut that they've done. Can we do it? Yes. But it's not a cut that you do and it lands like that. It stays there. It's styled into it to create those points. So, you know, the point off to the side, how do you, how do you cut it? When hair travels, it gets longer. All right? So, what do we need to do to that longer piece to make it happen. I've shown you guys how to create the corner here when we do a side bang. Some of the guys like that little corner coming off to the side. Principle is kind of the same. Kind of the same. It falls differently than that. So I want to make sure that you understand that before we do it. But anyways, um, good luck. Take care. Hope to see you again. Get the book. He wants me to show it. There we go. Take care.